Imagine the following situation. You have some variable that may be null. Now you want to do something with it, but only if it is not null. Of course, you could clutter your code with if not null checks. But in Kotlin, there is a better option. Hi and welcome to Premature Abstraction. Today, we will learn about a powerful tool to make your Kotlin code more concise, the scope functions. The first one we will look at is let. It gives you the object that you invoked the method on as it and returns the result of the expression. This is perfect for the situation from the introduction as it is mostly used for avoiding explicit checks for null. It can also be useful to temporarily give a name to a long expression without explicitly assigning a variable that would clutter your namespace, or if you just want to assign a variable name for a short time. If you instead want to return the original object instead of the block's result, you need to use also. We can still reference the object as it in the scope, but return the original object at the end. We can use it, for example, for intermediate side effects in a long call chain, or where we would create a variable just for logging something. Sometimes it can be a bit annoying to have to reference it all the time. By using apply, we can shadow the this reference from the outer scope to achieve the same as also, but with the ability to directly access the objects fields. This is a good candidate for initializing objects, where the constructor does not satisfy your needs or where you just have access to setter methods and want to bootstrap some kind of builder pattern. Note that this is mainly for saving characters or to use statements where an expression is needed. Also here, if you want to return the function result instead of the original object, there is the run method. You can access the context object with this and it will return the result of the lambda. An example for when this is helpful is when you want to configure an object and then return a result. There are also two more honorable mentions. First, instead of calling run on an object, you can also use the with function with the object as receiver argument. And you can use run also as a standalone call, just to open a new scope. Let's do a small recap. Our scope functions can be best classified by how you access the context object in the scope and by whether it returns the context object or the lambda result. For let and also, we access the context object with it and for run and apply with this. For let and run, the lambda result is returned while for also and apply, we get back the original object. Now on the web, there is some debate on whether these scope functions just make the code more complicated. They have a tendency to provoke over-engineering. Here are some examples where scope functions are rather a form of anti-pattern. For example, also can often be replaced by making the statements directly. This is also something I've seen in production code, which can obviously just be simplified. Instead of using let to avoid null checks everywhere, you should think about taking a step back and see if you can design your code in a way where the value cannot be null in the first place. This then leads to safer and more concise code. Using apply when you have the builder pattern available is just unnecessary and leads to unstandardized code. Still, they are a good tool to have at your disposal and you will frequently encounter them in Kotlin programs. This has been Premature Abstraction. Thank you for watching.